this is our very first first presentation of how it all works. A team member, you might know her, if you've toured here at Saratoga, Sherry Siklowski said, wouldn't it be great if we had a presentation to bring it all together as to how the whole thing works? How does it work when you visit, you know, when you're thinking about moving maybe to a, a fantastic adventure community, as many people call them, Brian <laughs> was telling me, um, a wonderful retirement community um, from, from that thought about taking that tour all the way to making that move. What happens? What's the deal? We're going to unlift the veil and we're going to talk about it today. Um, so I'm Erin Farrell. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at Saratoga Retirement Community. I've been here over eight years. I love this place. <laughs> we're located in Saratoga, California. We love it so much. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and uh, we also have with us the wonderful Brian Schwatka, who I've known since I started here at Saratoga. He's an amazing realtor. I'll let him introduce himself. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, everybody, for being here, you proactive homeowners, you. So uh, welcome to How It All Works from the time you make a decision till the time you make the transition. So I'm Brian Schwatka. I'm a realtor and transition specialist with Keller Williams Bay Area Estates here in Los Gatos and in Saratoga. And I've been a realtor since 2004, helping seniors make transitions to retirement communities for the past 20 years. So <laughs> kind of painted myself into a little box, but I love my little box and I love my seniors. And really Aaron and I are, we've got at least 50 years of combined experience. We're here for you. We have no expectations, no strings attached. We really want to help you. Um, just really want to help you on your adventure. You're about ready to make an adventure. And and so we want you to be joyful and have a peaceful life. And we want you to be safe in your surroundings, you know, whereas you might not feel that way at home. We want to reduce your stress. We want to help you make good decisions, the best decisions for your future. We want to save you time, money, frustration. We want to give you that clarity and certainty and confidence. But we don't want you to be waiting too long to make these decisions. And don't bank on your health remaining the same for the next 20 years, right? So number one, we don't want you to outlive your funds. And so we wanna help you make those decisions in that. So yeah, life is an adventure, We're possibly going to an adventure community and you're gonna be making transitions. So I started a website, it's called stayorgohomeowner.com. There's nothing to buy there, it's all education. And so if you don't have any idea of where you're at, whether you might wanna go, you don't know where you're gonna go or you're ready to go, there's three different sections of the website that can help you. If you have no clue at this point, you can just hit the start here button. You can down your own, download your own stair go workbook. You can fill it all in yourself and you can do your own self evaluation exercises. You can envision your future. There's an exercise for that. You can educate yourself by watching some webinar links, past recordings of webinar links. It helps you prioritize things and it helps you break that paralysis of analysis. So that's free. It's on the website. Download it, fill it in, have your co-owner fill it in as well and compare your notes and uh, have a little discussion over a glass of wine of how you see your future playing out. But it's all there for you. And I, being a transition specialist, I wear a lot of different hats. And there's those three buckets again. I might want to go. So I help you evaluate yourself I help you envision your future where would you go geez should I stay in my home age in place with in-home care services should I go to a community where would the community be would I follow my kids would I go to a different state should I stay here all of these things can be talked about while we get together but I'm going to assume that you by watching this video, you've pretty much made the decision to make a transition. Maybe you're not having that paralysis of analysis. So um, we're going to go into that today. We're going to say you're going on this adventure. You decided you made you're going to go right. And so you don't just run out the door and go on your adventure. <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts, especially going to a retirement community and selling your home. Right. Those are two big, gigantic things. And we need to do some planning. Uh, before we take off on our adventure, right? So adventure planning is going to reduce your stress, right? Because it's going to give you that clarity, that certainty, that confidence. You're going to be proactive. You're going to be making things happen, not just waiting for things to happen. 
And, you know, how do you eat an elephant? You know, one piece at a time. So slow and steady wins the race. We're going to chill out. We're going to reduce your stress. And this is how we do it with our planning. And this webinar we're talking about, it's the first time we've ever done it. And Sherry came up with the idea of doing it. And, and so this is the first time. And I looked on the Internet. There's nothing else out there like this that explains every step of the way so this is like groundbreaking and you're here for the first viewing so congratulations and here's our agenda for today so what we're going to do is we're going to go through four stages of your transition right so the first stage stage one is before you even get on the waiting list right you're just like which community should i go to how am i feeling where do i want to go and so we're going to tell you what happens at the community before you get on the waiting list what happens at your home before you get on the waiting list that's stage one and then we're going to move into stage two where the kind of the rubber hits the road right you get on the waiting list and what happens when you're on the waiting list it's not just you just wait there's things you need to be doing there's homework for you to do because remember we're going to eat that elephant nice and slow so what's happening at the community while you're on that waiting list that could be six months or two years or whoever knows how long that is but don't just sit around waiting for uh, things to happen. So what happens at the community? What happens at your home? Aaron and I are just going to switch off back and forth and tell you what's going on. Then you select an, a, a unit, an apartment or a cottage, and what happens when you give your 10% deposit at the community and what should be happening at your home. I'm working with my clients a year or two in advance so that we can slow things down, right? And then what happens after you land, right? Your house is your airplane. We're gonna take off, we're gonna sell it, and we're gonna land at the Saratoga Retirement Airport. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, okay? So I'm gonna hand it back over to Erin and she's gonna tell you what happens before you're even on the waiting list, right? So Erin, I'm gonna hand it back to you and turn my microphone off for a sec. Okay, thanks, Brian. So basically, I mean, you know, we're all thinking about, we're all aging, Every one of us, we're all thinking about what are we, what are our next steps? What are we doing? Um, we, we, many of us decide at one point, we want more <laughs> out of the rest of our lives than our homes can offer us. Um, and we want the safety and security of knowing we have health care if and when we ever need it. And we want fun. <laughs> we want community. We want adventure. We want to live an exciting life. Um, and so many people start to think to themselves, there's got to be other things out there. I want to start looking at some of these amazing places. So you, so we start touring. We start touring. We tour Saratoga Retirement Community. We tour other good places. I always tell everybody who tours Saratoga, we have excellent competitors. Um, it's good to visit uh, different campuses and get uh, get a flavor of what the different campuses have to offer because we are all unique individuals, you know, um, what, what you like, maybe I won't like, you know, <laughs> we're all just different. Um, but one of these places will, you'll, you'll just like it more than the others. You know, you'll feel more uh, at home or you'll feel some, uh, one place will resonate over the other. So here you are, you're touring these different places and now maybe you've pared it down to your top two, <laughs> or maybe it's only one that you really want to be at. Um, so you've gathered your brochures, you've explored all of the things that you've done, you've talked to residents. I can tell you um, when people get very serious about moving here to Saratoga Retirement Community, we actually require that they have lunch with resident hosts because um, that's just such a valuable way for people to get to know us, you know, people to get to know our residents and learn more about the life here at Saratoga through their lens um, so people find that to be enormously helpful and enlightening, um, and it really helps them to uh, understand who we really are. I mean, the salespeople at these campuses will tell you everything that they know. They'll want to be very helpful to you, um, but meeting with residents, um, residents actually live there, so they'll be able to lend a different, um, uh, you know, knowledge base to you when you're meeting with them. So here you've gone to the campuses, you've met some residents, uh, you've seen some places, you really know what you want, um, you learned about the pricing, you know, we, some campuses have refundable plans, we do, we have a refundable and a traditional entrance fee plan, uh, you, we've got events that you've gone to, 
Um, you you discuss your uh, health and your financial uh, situation with our team. You know, what can I afford? So a lot of times we wonder that, you know, um, and so we all figure that we work, we work with, we work that out together. Um, we talk over uh, services and amenities. Um, and then you've kind of narrowed your search down to, to what, to the few communities that you really see yourself enjoying and being a part of. And then you join the wait list. <laughs> and I can tell you at Saratoga, we don't mind. Um, people will often say, you know, people, when they tour us the first time, they'll say, you know, well, you know, I'm visiting this community. It's very nice. And I'll say, well, what other communities have you visited? And they'll be very shy about it. They don't, they don't want to hurt my feelings by telling me they visited. And I always say, no, 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 it's good. I want you to visit other communities. Tell me the communities. There are some great competitors out there. You should go look around. And same with the wait list. We have people who are on our wait list who are on the wait list at other campuses. And that's absolutely fine. You know, the truth is we want you to be happy, happy. So um, and wherever that is, if it's at Saratoga, that's fantastic. So um, we have, Brian was look, showed a screen. We have a lot of wonderful amenities at the campus. Um, we have an amazing indoor aquatic center. We have uh, game rooms. We have, of course, a, a wonderful, huge library um, and uh, auditorium, a gorgeous koi pond. So if you haven't visited us, you should come and visit us. <laughs> I'd love to uh, have the opportunity to meet you and show you around our beautiful campus. So, so, so to get on our wait list, um, you complete, first of all, to get on our wait list, our requirement, because we actually have a lot of applicants on our wait list. Um, when I first started here about, uh, I've been here almost nine years. And when I first started, maybe we'd get um, one application every few months. And now we're getting sometimes two to five applications a week. So we have a lot of people on the wait list. Um, so we really had to kind of pare it down a little bit. Um, so we only allow people to get on their, our wait list when they have a year in mind that they're planning on making the move. In other words, it used to be you could get on our wait list if you were just kind of thinking about this as a high level concept. Maybe I'll be moving to a campus someday. Maybe I'm warming up to the idea. We still love you if you're doing that. We get it. That, that takes time to figure all this stuff out. But we don't want you to get on our wait list until you do know, hey, I definitely want to make a move. This is the year I'm working towards, and I'm working towards it. We, we expect that people who are on our wait list, that they are working towards that year that they plan on making the move. Because we, too, are working on their behalf to help them make that move. Um, so they, they, to get on our wait list, you know, the year that you're working towards uh, making the move, you've completed your personal and financial questionnaire. Um, so you've got, you know, you, you know, that this is the campus you can afford. We know that it's a good financial fit for everyone. Um, you have so, a few healthcare questions, um, and you've got a physician's report. You, you submit all of that to us. Uh, and your wait list fee, um, and you're on our wait list. <laughs> and um, you're not just waiting though, uh, because you're because people who are on our wait list are definitely communicating to us um, throughout the process. Say you say you want to get on our wait list and you want to move in in 2027, or you want to move in in 2026, 2025, whatever the year. You're working with us and letting us know, yes, I'm still working towards that year. You know, you're calling us, we're calling you, we're, we're communicating this to one another. Because the truth is, most of these campuses have a ton of people who want to move in. They want to move in now. We have constantly people who want to move in right away. And we're mindful of our applicants. Um, it used to be, um, I was here during a time when, when we had a wait list program where we would just call all the applicants every time an apartment's ready. I mean, when, the, when we got an apartment, we'd go down the list. Are you ready? Are you ready? Those days are gone. Uh, instead, we're working with you according to your readiness. So you're, you're calling us, we're talking, 
you're asking, is that apartment coming up? <laughs> I'm next, right? And we're saying, yes, you know, we're, you know, we're working towards that. So that's kind of how, how it works now. So a lot of people, when they come and tour, they say, what if you call and we're not ready? That won't happen. You need to, you need to be ready, you know, according to your readiness, we're never going to pressure you because we have all these other people who want to come here and they're ready. So we want you to get ready whenever you, whenever that, whenever you want that to be. Um, so that's kind of how our uh, initial wait list process works. And um, yeah. <laughs> and right. so we, we, we determine, of course, through your, your paperwork, whether you're a financial uh, fit, you do have to get into these wait lists when you're independent. Um, a lot of people say to themselves, well, I'll wait. You know, they'll tell me, they'll tell me, you know, when, when something, when, you know, I, right now I'm okay in my house, you know, I'm okay. Um, so I'll just wait until something happens. And then I always say, no, no, no. Independent living is for people who are 100% independent. Um, if you're waiting for a health event to happen, you know, the, the, it's it's unsure as to whether you'll be able to qualify for independent living. You if you need assistance, you will not be able to qualify for independent living. That's a different thing. That's called assisted living. Um, for people who want to get into independent living, waiting is not your friend. Uh, you want to get in. You want to. We have people here in in their in their early sixties now who still go to work every day. Um, so they they didn't want to wait at all. They moved in very young. That's very young actually you know we're not used to seeing that um but you know so so don't wait too long you know because th those people who moved in at younger said to themselves i don't want some health event to prevent me from getting into the community i want to be in i want to be in that community i don't want to wait if i can possibly get in earlier that's going to be the right move for me um and i do recommend getting in when you when you possibly can all right. All right. So let's see. That's stage one of four. What's happening at your home or with me or with some other realtor uh, before you even get on the waiting list? OK, so I would say the first thing is educate yourself. If you're just not sure yet, we've got plenty of webinars that you can watch uh, to get you off the fence and break your paralysis of analysis. Right. Uh, there's myths you've heard about retirement communities. You're thinking, what's the difference between in-home care and the retirement community? What are the costs? What are the pros and cons of that? And we'll help you and, and educate you. Uh, I would say, let's get together. Uh, no expectations on my part, not realtor at this point, just the uh, kind of the Sherpa uh, at the bottom of Everest. Uh, I've been there, done that for the last 20 years. So let's talk about your finances, your health, and your support network your trust in estate, your real estate. Let's think about where you might want to be going. Don't follow the kids. Don't follow the kids. <laughs> <laughs> that is good advice, Brian. Yes, then they're going to leave. It happened to my dad. He moved to Texas and the kids moved out of Texas and he was stuck there. So, uh, well, let's talk about 55 plus communities. Let's talk about month to month or buying in at a continuing care retirement community. Which community really matches your vision of the future of where you see your life and how you see your life playing out and you'll get the vibe and all of that kind of stuff so we can talk about all this in person because i've got so much in my head it's hard to just spell it all out in a webinar or a book also you need to know what your nest egg is actually worth after you pay those wonderful capital gains taxes that you might be paying and we have some strategies and some things that you should be thinking about so like I said, I'm working with people two years in advance of their move. And um, let's just get it like you've got a dentist, you've got a CPA, you've got a financial planner, you got an estate planner, you know, you should have a realtor and you should be talking to somebody who specializes in getting retirees to retirement communities. So that's what's happening before you even get on the waiting list. And now ta -da, you're on the waiting list. Let's say you did it right. Ah, awesome. And she's like, oh, we have no idea what's happening next. And he's like, well, let's just wait around, you know, and wait till our name gets called. And then we'll call a realtor and start doing stuff. You got homework to do now. This is how it all works. Uh, so the waiting list isn't just to wait on. The waiting list is to start to get started. The journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step, right? So let's just 
take that first step slow and steady wins the race i'm going to hand it back over to erin she's going to tell you what happens once you're on that waiting list and just a reminder we're already at 11 24 and we're only at stage two of four so um I'm not saying to rush. I'm just <laughs> letting everyone know right. that you know, we're about halfway through. So, all right. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll, I'll try and hurry up. <laughs> it's all. It's such good information. And you know what, everybody? If we go over five or ten minutes, this is such a valuable webinar with two people that really, not bragging, but this is all we do. So, you know, if we go over a few <laughs> minutes, hang in there, okay? So, uh, hand it over to Aaron. Thank you. And we love you and we want to inform you. We want to help you as best as we can. We know it's a lot to think about. You know, it is a lot to think about. But um, when you do get on our wait list, um, we do expect our applicants to be proactive. Um, and and, and it, we consider our wait listers, you applicants, applicants are our partners. We are partners with you, helping this move to happen for you. We want you to be so happy for the rest of your life that's our big goal you know so together you know that's our big goal and i know you want that for yourself as well so we ask that you stay engaged with us um i tell all the applicants we have an applicant 101 class every year and i tell the applicants the squeaky wheel gets the oil so the people that are banging on our door really wanting to move in we, they will get in first you know because it's fair, you know, there are definitely people on our wait list who are, you know, they're they're not ready today to make the move. Um, but we certainly have families who really are anxious to get in and we work more closely with those families because they're more ready. So that just makes more sense. And when it's your time to be more ready, we'll work closely with you. Um, you we ask that you get connected with the community because that's going to be to your best interest. You know, we have numerous functions and events that we invite you to all year long. Uh, we always invite residents to these events so that you can get a chance to meet and mingle with the people that you'll be living <laughs> and, you know, living in the community with and get to enjoy them and get to um, know them. We always bring new key staff members for you to meet so that you'll get to know team members that you'll be enjoying uh, and working with. Um, and we take you all over campus so that you'll get to see campus and places that you'll be entertaining your own guests um, and uh, enjoying for yourself. So during that waitlist process, you're, you're coming to the campus, you're meeting people, you're warming to the campus, you're really starting to feel like this is your place. You cannot wait to get in here because it's fun. Um, so then you are... Um, you're uh, you're watching these webinars, which are, which Brian and I put Brian puts together for um, for you and I participate in. It's fantastic for our applicants. They found it to be enormously valuable. Um, you prepare your ten percent funds um, because you're working with us on getting that call that we have what you want available now. Um, you're meeting with your financial advisor, your CPA. Um, then we then you've been calling us and we've been working with you and we're all waiting for us to get that perfect apartment or cottage that you're waiting for. And I get it. I get the keys. I'm ready to show it to you. I call you and you preview your apartment or your cottage um, and you fall in love and you get you're ready for your move. It is true. The more picky you are, I'm just being honest, we want you to have what you want. Um, but the more selective and choosy, I want an East View apartment. The color hat, the sky has to be perfect this way. You might be waiting ten years to get here if you want a very specific something. Um, my best advice at any campus, you know, open yourself up to new ideas of you know apartment sizes and locations because you want to get in that campus. You're not, your life won't be just wrapped up in the apartment that you choose. It will be wrapped up in the amazing lifestyle at these campuses. So um, that's a that's a great bit of advice for anyone. Okay. All right. Well, that's what's happening at the community. Uh, you know, because you got to be ready. This could happen once you're on the waiting list. Sometimes it's only three months. Sometimes it's three years we just don't know so we do have to be ready but what's going on at your home 
I would think at this point, okay, I'm on the waiting list. I have to start getting a little more serious about it. And as we go through these stages, the sense of urgency and the speed of things and the number of things that are happening kind of increase. So I would say sooner than later, let's get together. Okay. And again, no expectations, no strings attached on my side, but I want to give you this pre-transition manual. Okay. This is all of the homework you're going to need to be doing between the time you put your name on the waiting list and the time that you pretty much engage. Okay. This is the pre-transition manual. We're going to talk about what's the current value of your home, what's the capital gains taxes you're going to be paying, what your walkaway amount would be, because Erin needs to know when she's doing her financial analysis of exactly how much your home is worth in today's market. And that number could change while you're on the waiting list. It could be, you know, a certain number now and two years from now or one year from now, your number would change. But you do need to know what you're going to be walking away with. You do also need to be thinking about if a co-owner passed away or if a co-owner passes away between now and the time that you move, how you're holding title to your home, what to do if that happens. Uh, we need to talk about are you going to occupy your home while it's on the market or are you going to vacate your home and then put it on the market. Uh, and if you want to move first, um, I get it. That's It's very difficult to occupy your home while it's on the market and while you're going through all that home preparation. So, And I know your funds are, are held up and tied up into that home, and you're thinking, well, I have to sell first to get the funds, to give the funds, and then I can move in. But you can't get the funds till you sell your house, which means you need to occupy your house. But I have some very creative financing or financial options for you so that you can move first. I want you to be the least amount stressed. And if you are living in your home that whole time going through all of that, it's quite a stressful thing to do. And so I wanna reduce that for you. So we'll talk also about what you wanna to do to your home to get it ready for the market. What don't you need to do to get it ready for the market? Some tips, some downsizing strategies. I'll teach you how to interview a realtor, okay? One of them, I hope, is me, but I'll teach you how to interview other realtors and teach you about the listing agreement. So there's a lot going on in that pre-transition manual that I'll give you during our appointment when we get together. And so we talked about the occupying or vacating, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in stages three and four. Um, but there, like I said, there's lots of things to be thinking about. We should start gathering information. Okay, uh, because we don't want to wait to come into problems. We sometimes we wait too long to find out things about the home or things about your trust or things about your solar or your HOA documents or your title report and who's on title and who's the successor trustee and all of these different things that we need to start looking into now. Remember, we're going to spread this all out to reduce our stress. And now lastly, I would say when you're on the waiting list, you're going to want to start thinking about downsizing. I know no one wants to think about downsizing because the kids don't want any of your stuff and you don't want it all, but you do want it all. And, and you have all these memories and 50 years of memories that aren't going to fit into my new home. So I'm not saying you need to, you know, like get it all done now, but you need to start thinking about it. And here's what I want you to think about is just what you're taking with you. Okay. We can worry about your thimble collection and your golf ball collection and all the tools in the garage and all of that kind of stuff later. At this point, just start thinking to yourself, hmm, I wonder what I really love and need and use on a regular basis. Okay, if I haven't used that thing in two years, I'm probably not going to need it at the community. And they have all everything you need at the community anyway. So grab yourself a little, small little tool bag and just, you know, your photo albums and the things that are really important to you. So just start thinking about that, okay? So back here, we're going on to stage three, which is you've selected the unit, right? Aaron called you, you weren't too picky, you got it, you're excited, you know, here we go, now what? <laughs> well, I want you to be saying at that point, good thing we did all of our homework ahead of time and we were ready for this call, right? When you get that call, it shouldn't be, oh my God, you know, what do I, I, I got to do all of this in the next 30 to 60 days or 90 days. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. So I'm going to hand it back to Erin and she's going to tell you what happens when you say, I want that apartment. Okay. So you, you, you fall in love with this apartment. You're so excited. We are too. <laughs> um, so you, you meet with us, you meet, you and I would schedule a meeting with our executive director they do the final um, uh, kind of meet and greet with you. Our executive uh, team usually just likes to meet with the incoming families just to, you know, 
introduce themselves if you haven't already met them, answer any questions you might have, um, you know, prior to signing your 10% agreement, just making sure that you know as much about the campus as you possibly can. Um, then you sign your deposit agreement with us. It's a 10% agreement. It's non-binding, so you'd be paying 10% of your entrance fee. I always tell people, you know, if you changed your mind between the time you sign your 10% agreement and you sign your contract, you would get a full refund of that 10% agreement. It's almost never happens, frankly, because by the time you've made this decision, you usually pretty much well known that, you know, you want to move to the campus and you know what you want. But it's nice to know you have that out. Um, you review the sales team, uh, the sales terms of, of your agreement. Um, you've got, we've got your health assessment, your physician's report already. So you've already been fully approved by the campus. And it's usually a 60 day turnaround. So once you've signed that 10% agreement, Within 60 days, usually, we will have your apartment or your cottage ready for you to occupy, okay? So you know that. Um, you um, We, at that 10% uh, agreement signing, we turn you over to our renovations team and our moving coordinators. So we've got our wonderful moving coordinator who's helping you with all the move-in information that you need. Um, kind of holding your hand through the process. Your renovation team is helping you select select paint. Do I want what color paints? Do I want on my walls? Do I want carpet in my bedrooms? Or would I prefer hardwood flooring? Those kind of decisions you'll be making with the team. Um, you've got your floor plan, so you're ready to figure out what you want to put in your beautiful apartment or cottage. Um, we've already got your financial assessment. You've been approved. Um, and you've got a nice binder that you're going to get, a move-in binder from our move-in team, and and we'll also be turning you over to a move manager. Uh, Saratoga actually pays $5,000 towards a move manager for you, which is, I know, it is a clap. Let me tell you, we didn't always do that. <laughs> we started doing that when residents, um, incoming families would be using these move managers and they'd come to my office and Aaron, it's the best thing in the world. They've made it so much easier. So I, my executive director team, they were so uh, uh, gracious to allow us to provide $5,000 towards that um, service. And it's fantastic. Fantastic. Because what these people do is they come to your house, they've got the floor plan. They'll help you figure out what you want to bring. They'll, they'll pack everything for you. They meet your movers here. They unpack everything for you. They just really also hold your hand through the process, help you to figure out how to downsize. They're really amazing. So um, so all of that happens once you've signed your 10% agreement. All right. Yeah, I, I attest. Uh, I, I concur. Uh, 90, <laughs> I'd say 95% of my clients use a downsizer slash move manager. 95% of those said uh, before I even told them what a downsizer was, I'll just do it myself. No one knows how to go through my stuff. You know, I'm the only one who can do that. And the kids, they had this and that. So we'll handle it ourselves. And a hundred percent of the time after they use the move manager, they tell me, I don't even know how I could have even. So yes, move manager. Definitely. Definitely. Um, think about that. That's my last bullet point here is focus on what you're taking with you. We'll handle the rest. Don't spend time, money, and effort um, worrying about things that other people can worry about. Oh, the only thing, the only people who can decide what's going is you, right? The other stuff, we'll figure it all out. We'll take care of it. We'll find homes for it. Um, you know, we'll donate it or we'll sell it or we'll consign it or we'll recycle it or we'll take it to household hazardous waste. Don't worry about that kind of stuff. Just focus on what you're taking with you because you're the only person who can tell us that. Okay, so let's go back to the top of mind. You've selected your unit. The rubber's hitting the road. They've told you, okay, your unit's going to be ready in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, depending on how many, how many renovations they're going to do. You know, has, 
has the person lived the prior person where you're moving into their home have they been there 10 or 15 years well then we're going to need a lot of remodeling if they just moved in a few years and they're tra um, transitioning into assisted living then we don't need to do as much and your move-in time is going to be shorter so we don't know if it's a 30 60 or 90 day window until you put your 10 percent down and now yikes we got to get going so i would say watch the webinar it's called the flight plan okay and that is this is the flight plan it's a, a 50 page book i wrote that is the entire real estate transaction from the time you sign a listing agreement till the time you close escrow and get the funds everything that's happening behind the scenes what i'm doing what my team's doing what's happening at the community what's happening with the buyer and the buyer's agent and the buyer's lender and the title company and what's happening first second and third and all the people that are working on your home i know you need to know this this is stress-free right here just knowing what's going to happen next and i can say we're on page 13 you know and you, so you'll never have to call and say what the heck's going on so there's a webinar that you can watch for that you're going to hire a realtor if you haven't done so already usually i'm hired uh once you have uh, selected the 10 percent, or even run, once you're on the waiting list to smooth things out we're going to give you a new comparative market analysis because let's say you were on the market for a year or two and now your home's worth something different and nara needs to have some updated numbers uh, to redo her financial assessment again very very important is for you to decide before it wasn't as important now it's really important are you going to vacate that home and let us have a vacant home to update market sell negotiate 30-day close of escrow all of that if you vacate you don't have to worry about any of that nothing even happens until you leave right and we can help you with those creative financing options it's a bridge loan and bridge loans aren't for everybody because the bridge loan normally a bridge loan is for when you're buying a new home when you're not buying a new home you're buying a residential care agreement so it's a very odd sort of bridge loan so i can hook you up with that but if you are occupying everything's going to happen at the same time in fact i think i have a slide here this is the table of contents for the flight manual, you don't want to have to live through all of this. I'm telling you, it's uh, quite stressful. Uh, and also, the community needs their funds on an exact date, whether it's the 10% or it's the 90%. So all of this real estate transaction can really vary. Like, uh, let's say a buyer backs out. Let's say something goes wrong. Let's say it takes longer to sell than we thought. Well. You can't tell Aaron, well, it's taking longer than we thought to sell, so I'll get your money sometime soon. You don't want to do that. You don't want to go through all of this, and you don't want to worry about when the funds are being transferred. So um, we do want to talk also about getting that home ready to go on the market, and our goal is to save you as much money as possible. There's very low inventory on the market right now. In fact, normally there's about two or 3,000 homes on the market at any given time. Right now there's about 500 homes. Um, and so the homes that are going on the market are selling quite quickly because there's not a lot for these buyers to choose from. So there's not a lot of reason for you to go making taking your home from good to great. We're not gonna replace countertops and you know remodel bathrooms and things like that really all we're going for is some curb appeal right so if you've got those junipers and ivy out in front and there's you know old cats and toys in the ivy and stuff we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna help you so that they can see the home so we're gonna uh, make it look good on the internet really what we're looking for is those pictures to look fantastic right so we're going to do some landscaping we're going to wash the outside of the house maybe we'll do some paint on the outside of the house just some touch up we're definitely probably going to be painting some of the interior if you haven't done it in a while and when you move all of your stuff out there's going to be voids and holes and things uh i know you love your wallpaper it was really popular <laughs> but the kids who are buying your homes they might not want wallpaper the wallpaper might be looking making the home look smaller or darker um, so we might have to do some removal there. It'd probably be a good idea for you not to be occupying the home at this process, or if you are going to occupy the home, just kind of go on vacation while we're getting the home ready to go on the market. We're going to talk about flooring. 
So really it's landscaping, painting, and flooring. That gives you the biggest return on your investment. We're gonna spend the least amount possible to get you the largest amount possible. Um, so we're gonna do an industrial strength, window cleaning, house cleaning. Um, you're responsible for all of these costs to get the home ready to go on the market. You have to give me something to sell. Once you give me that vacant home and it's it's been repaired or upgraded or ready for the market, then I'll pay for all of the marketing, all the staging and all of the photographs and all of the videos and all of the networking we're going to do. There's a lot to it. So that's the best that I can give you for the high level home preparation stuff, but we'll get together and we'll say, you do need to do this. You don't really need to do that. And we'll come up with a budget of, you know, what you're willing to spend. And if you don't have a lot of funds, maybe you get those from a home equity line of credit. Maybe you borrow them from the kids, or maybe you just say, Brian, I've only got $5,000 to fix the home up. I'll tell you the best way to spend that $5,000. So we have to get together and talk about this kind of stuff. All right. Once we've talked about who's going to be your realtor, if you're vacating or occupying, if you are doing your home prep and we've done all of that, now it's time to put a transaction calendar together based on the 30, 60 or 90 day move in. We'll put the calendar together based on that date. And then we will meet with the downsizer, the move manager, and they will help you, uh, you know, downsize your stuff and get ready to move. Right. So just focus on what you're taking with you. Uh, we'll get a little more in stage four of really the rubber hitting the road as far as what's happening, but this is at a high level when that 10% that you got to engage and hopefully you've already engaged in stage two when you were on the waiting list. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm rambling on. I could talk forever about this stuff. It's just because uh, I've done it so much and I love it so much and I love the results when um, when the homeowner says, wow, my house looks so good. Maybe I won't want to go to the retirement community. <laughs> you did such a good job. Maybe I'll just stay. Thanks. You know, but um, it's just really rewarding. Uh, I have a video and we'll send out a video of uh, some of my clients who, when I first met them, they did not want to go to retirement community. I'm going out feet first. You're not getting me to a retirement community. There's no way I love it here. And then I went to the community with Saratoga and I interviewed some of my past clients that are now living there. And I'm like, so what were you thinking before all this happened? What did you find was the hardest thing that you had to go through? How were you pleasantly surprised when you got here? And what would you tell somebody who's on the fence? It's a great little six minute video that really solidifies what it's all about, about living on a cruise ship on land. So every time I'm there, my blood pressure drops and I want to stay and they have to tell me to leave. And, you know, as soon as I'm old enough, I'll be there. So anyway, rambling again, I'm going to hand it off over to Aaron. <laughs> all right. So you're moving out, whether that's, you know, um, well, you're moving out and you're moving in. You're on your airplane, you're heading towards the uh, Saratoga Retirement Community cruise ship on land. I'm going to hand it back to Erin, and she's going to tell you what happens as you're landing at the community, okay? All right. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're all excited. You've done everything. You're ready to make this move. Um, you've, you've got your move planned. You come in, we schedule a time for you to come in and sign your residence and care agreement. Um, we have already, by the way, I should have mentioned this before, we've already given you a copy of this. We would give you a copy of this if you toured today, your very first time. If you want a copy of our residence and care agreement, we're happy to share it with anybody. Um, but before you've even, uh, you know, come here today to sign your, your resident and care agreement, you've already had it, you've had a chance to read it. Any questions you had about it, you would have already asked us because on the day that you come in and sign, you're just signing that agreement. Um, you're wiring the balance of your entrance fee or you're giving us a check for the balance of your entrance fee. Um, we won't even really let you sign the contract until the funds you have the funds with you um, or that balance uh, is being uh, wired to us. That's how most campuses work. Um, you're going to meet with your moving coordinator you're doing your final walk in through the home uh you know you're you're everything's already been we've already done a walk through ourselves so we're making sure everything's in place uh with you 
um, you're receiving your keys, which is so exciting, <laughs> to your apartment and your key fob and your badges and your parking and all of that fun stuff. Um, so then you usually go home, go back to your, your current place and your move manager has a time that they come and they bring all the packing materials. It's so great. They bring all the packing materials. They they pack everything for you. The, the moving company that you've paid for to move your items from your home to Saratoga, uh, they they move your items. The, the move manager meets the moving company here and they unpack everything for you. They put everything away for you. They make your bed. They hang your clothes. Um, they take all the packing materials away and then they leave. <laughs> and you walk in to a beautiful home here uh, that you've chosen and that you've waited so long for and you're so excited about. Um, once you're here, uh, you know, within a within a two week period, you'll be you'll be on a rotation with our teams. Um, our our teams, our different teams will be doing an orientation process with you. You'll be meeting with our chefs to make sure there aren't any dietary restrictions. Usually we actually find out about that before you even come here. Um, but they'll be talking to you about preferences. What type of foods do you like? Maybe we'll incorporate that into the menus, um, that type of things. You'll meet the housekeeping. Um, you'll meet with facilities. Hey, I'm, I'm your facilities team member. I'm gonna hang your pictures for you or whatever you need. Um, and then you'll, re you'll meet your mentors. Um, your mentors are selected to, for you by fellow residents. There's a committee that we, they learn about you through us, and then they select mentors among the residents that will be your personal friends to really introduce you around, um, invite you to dinner, show you uh, different things on campus that you might not have seen. Um, some families just decide, allow, you know, elect to meet their mentors before they move here. Uh, so after they sign their 10% agreement, sometimes some people want to meet their mentors. Most people don't because you're so inundated with the move-in process. Most people are like, no, I already know people there. We'll deal with that when I get there. But to Brian's point, my favorite thing to hear, my favorite thing to hear is, that people always come in my office. I wish I would have moved here sooner. I wish I would have moved here sooner. That's what most people um, say because it's it's pretty, it's kind of like one of Brian's um, former clients said on, on the video, it's like day camp. <laughs> it's like day camp for seniors. It really is. It's like, it's just fun, high-end, just amazingness. So yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, okay. Well, let's move on to what's happening at your home. Yikes. Uh, when you're moving in. Okay. And I'm going to assume uh, that you moved in first and now you've got an empty home and we're going to give you about a week or so to kind of just settle in. You're going to have two homes for a while. You can have your retirement community where you've thought you brought everything you needed, but oops, you know, I could use something that back at the home, I didn't think there was gonna be enough room and now there is, let's get that. Or, hey, I brought too much stuff and let's bring some stuff back. Um, so we'll give you a week or so to just kind of settle in, right? We don't wanna just go, okay, get out of here and then let's get going. So the downsizer is gonna come in and they're gonna focus on what you didn't focus on, all of the other stuff, right? Donating, consigning, recycling, disposing, everything we can do, we try and keep as much out of the landfill as possible. We're going to start on our home repairs, so we're going to have our moving and design coordination team of what we're going to do to the home. We're going to start getting on people's uh, radar screens and getting quotes for those home preparations so you can decide what you are going to do and what you're not going to do if we're meeting that budget. We are going to start all of that home preparation, whether it's the flooring. Flooring, it's usually uh, painting first and then flooring second and landscaping and cleaning at the end right before you go on the market. We're gonna do a home inspection, pest inspection, roof inspection, chimney inspection, so that we can sell that home as is, clean conscience. Here's everything we know about the home, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Here's everything the realtor knows. Here's everything that the seller knows. And that's what we're going for, right? So inspections, disclosures, everything on the table. Um, we're gonna be cleaning that house and getting it ready for the market. We're gonna be 
doing everything that's in this listing manual. This really spells it out. I can't really spell it out in six minutes, but it's a lot of information and a lot of things we're going to be doing. We have a spreadsheet behind the scenes of 300 different line items and tasks that we attend to to get that home ready to go on the market. And so once we do our marketing, once we get it onto the internet, it's going to go out worldwide within the first 15 minutes. Uh, we're going to be doing open houses if you want. My theory is if you're still living in the home and all of your stuff is in the home, we probably might not do an open house because only 1% of homes are sold because of an open house. But if you're, if you're vacating the property, we're going to do open houses all the time, right? I'm going to be negotiating any sort of terms you need if you are still living in the home and you need some time afterwards, after you close and you get your funds and then you need two weeks to move out then I'll negotiate a rent back for you on your behalf if you are occupying. Um, I'm going to teach you how to select the best buyer and the best offer because sometimes the best offer isn't the highest priced offer, it's the best buyer. So I'll teach you how to do that. We'll get into removing contingencies. That's the long pole in the tent when it comes to selling a home is the buyer saying, I remove all my contingencies, I'm taking it as is. And then uh, closing escrow, getting your funds, transferring all of your city services, there's a lot to it. All right, so one final thought. I'm done with that. Uh, we're done with the four stages there, and there, we can go a lot deeper. I mean, we only had a few minutes, so if you ever want to talk about any of this or go deeper on this, like costs or availability, all of that stuff, Aaron and I are open books. We'll have lunch with you if you want me to be there for lunch. <laughs> Let me know, because <laughs> the food at Saratoga Retirement Community is a uh, premier in this valley, right? So uh, anyway, one final thought before we go is the fact that we don't want you to wait so long and your options are going to be reduced, okay? So you got to get in the independent living front door because those special people that planned ahead and thought about it and were proactive and went through these four stages, they did it in advance, healthy, in the, the independent living front door, and they're gonna travel through the system. A continuing care retirement community is independent, assisted living, memory care, and skilled care. You're gonna go through the system. First right of refusal into assisted living. If you wait too long and you need help with too many uh, activities of daily living and you're considered uh, you know, assisted and you come knock on the side assisted living door, they're going to say, sorry, we don't have any availability because everybody came and is going through the system. So please don't wait too long. Um, take the first step. Call Aaron, call myself. Let's just get together and chat. Uh, if you do want to meet in person, I can go through all of this stuff with you. Evaluating, envisioning, educating, exploring your options and executing your plan. We can get together and talk in person for an hour. We can do that on the phone. We can do it on Zoom. So can Aaron. We can do it in person, whatever you, whatever works best for you to really get a clear picture, you know, that clarity and certainty and confidence knowing I'm going on an adventure, right? I've made a decision. I broke my paralysis of analysis and now help me, <laughs> you know, show me everything, spell it all out and let's get started. So that's it. I'll give you the pre-transition guide, which we've already talked about. This is all of the webinars that are we're doing uh, with Saratoga Retirement Community in 2024. And it's broken out into those three categories, right? I might want to go, where would I go? And I'm ready to go. So we're going to do those in chronological order. And we wanted this to be the first one of the year, just so you kind of knew like, what's it all about? And so hopefully we did that for you. Um, I don't see any questions um, on our uh, Q&A, so we either completely confused you <laughs> or we covered everything. So it's one of those things. But if you have any questions, you can type them in now. But, um, you know, I just thank you for being here. I want to thank you, Aaron, for having me. And, you know, we're just looking forward to helping you make good decisions. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brian, for everything. Yeah. And, um yeah, it, anything that we can do to be helpful to you, we know it's a lot to think about. Um, you're so wise to be here just, you know, thinking about this for yourself. You know, you're doing a great thing for yourself and we're help we we are here to help you along every step of the way. So don't hesitate to call, email, uh, pop on by. We're here for you. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Okay, still no questions, so I guess we'll sign off. Look at that. We finished 1 minute early. We're going to have to talk more next time. <laughs>
<laughs> or slow down. <laughs> All right. Well, great to see everybody. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks, Erin. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.